Hey everyone, it's Erica and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I get into more detail on how my Sims 4 is set up on my Mac using my external USB drive. So I hope this video is useful to you and if you have any questions, be sure to just leave them down below and I can try my best to help. So before we jump in, I just want to start with a disclaimer to watch my previously posted video, which was actually my first video on my channel um, and it's how I play the Sims 4 on a 2018 MacBook Air. So in that video, I go over some helpful tips for using an external hard drive or USB as well as in game settings. I did also post a YouTube short of it if you want a Cliff Notes version of the video. I also just want to state before we begin that I am not a Mac expert. I sort of just learned all of this by trial and error, um, a lot of tears and heart attacks. <laughs> so please watch the entire video before starting the process because I don't want you to make the same mistakes that I did and like accidentally delete or mess things up. So thank you and without further ado, let's get into it. So the USB stick that I am referring to in this video is a SanDisk 128 gigabyte that supports both USB-C and USB-A functions. So I actually bent the USB side of mine by accident, so it came in handy that I had the USB-A side that I could just use instead. So I highly recommend getting one that's similar and also has 100 gigabytes or more of space. First off, let's begin with the origin app and the A folder. Please bear in mind also that I'll probably have this video posted before Mac moves over to the EA play app so when we have to make that unfortunate switch i will most likely make another video explaining my updated setup side note how do you guys feel about the ea app in my opinion i haven't heard too many good reviews about it especially with the issues of not being able to play offline so i hope that they get that fixed before we actually have to make the switch but anyways so if i open up origin and go under my application settings you can see that my downloads are saved to my usb volume or volume slash usb However, um, my EA folder is actually located on my hard drive. And so you're probably thinking, why isn't the EA folder also on your USB? Allow me to explain. So I originally had both the game and the EA folder all on the USB. However, I was encountering issues with my Mac saying that The Sims 4 was like already running and it wouldn't open or other times it would open, but it like wouldn't locate the EA folder on the USB and it would instead like create a fresh EA folder every time that I opened the app and my save files just wouldn't be there. So as you can imagine, this was incredibly frustrating and I was scared of losing my save files so I sort of just gave up on trying to save the EA folder on the USB, um, especially since I'm not the most tech savvy person. I was just too scared to mess things up and wipe my saves so I just ended up storing it on my hard drive to be on the safe side. Now we know that this may not be the most helpful, especially if you're lacking computer space, but let me just remind you that my max storage is only 128 gigabytes with probably 75% of that being the Mac OS software because for some reason every update takes space and so the sims 4 app actually takes up about 23 gigabytes and then all of the packs like stuff packs kits etc they take up just over 35 gigabytes which is actually incredibly large however the ea folder itself is actually quite small compared to that you can see that it only takes up about 10 gigabytes and of that 8 gigabytes is just my mods folder So let's backtrack a moment. Let's say that you're having troubles with the EA folder and you want to move it back to your hard drive off of the USB. For this example, I just created a blank EA folder, but your EA folder should have all of the content within it. First thing you're going to want to do is make a copy of your EA folder to your USB and rename this folder on the USB as EA1 or whatever else you want to call it. So this is essentially your backup folder. You may also save it onto another USB or a different drive, just as long as you have your backup. You can just go ahead ahead and move the folder into your document folder on your Mac. So I'm not actually going to do this just because it will replace the one that I have, but essentially what happens with the Sims 4 game is that it automatically tries to locate the EA folder because it needs to recognize the components in order to support the running of the application. Now, I don't know the exact reason behind this, but it's kind of just the way it is. So when you open your game, it should pull from the EA folder on your computer. Periodically, your Mac will need to verify the application on your USB. So I believe this is actually just a Mac security feature. It's not really anything to worry about. However, anytime that you actually unplug your USB and plug it back in, most of the time your Mac will need to verify it. The verification process itself actually takes pretty much as long as the amount of packs that you have, as well as if you have a slow internet, if you don't have access to the internet. So just make sure that like you're prepared if you're going to be playing offline. 
Okay, so now that the game is open, let's just say that none of your saves or your mods showed up. So sometimes the game may create a new EA folder, like I explained before, if it doesn't recognize the one that you moved over. So if this happens, don't worry, all you have to do is copy the missing content, which is typically your save files, your tray, and your mod folder over to the EA folder that the game just created, and then just reopen the game. So you can also just copy all of the contents of your original EA folder on the USB that you saved, like your backup folder, and just paste them in the newly created folder that the game made. Just make sure that there's no duplicates. Then you want to go ahead and reopen The Sims 4. And hopefully at this point, all of your saves and mods should be there. So thinking about other troubleshooting methods, let's say that your Sims 4 game is currently stored on your Mac and you're running out of space, so you wanna move it to a USB. So before you do this, you wanna make sure that you follow my step in option one to make a backup of your EA folder to ensure that you don't lose anything. So a super simple way to move The Sims 4 onto a USB is to open Origin and change the game library location to your USB. So mine is volume slash USB. The USB part would just be whatever you name it. Um, I forgot. To to clarify that earlier. Anyway, so your settings should look the same as mine, and then you're just going to want to locate the Sims 4 app in the packs in your application folder and drag these items, so both the app and the folder that has all of your packs in it, you're going to drag them over to your USB. Then, if it doesn't work, you may need to fully install the game onto your USB. So that brings us over to option three. So if you haven't already downloaded The Sims 4 onto your computer, or you just choose to uninstall and reinstall everything after you've backed up your EA folder, all you have to do is set the game library location to your USB, and then the game download settings to the installation to the USB. This should basically just download the game to USB directly. Now during this process, you really want to make sure that you do not unplug your USB, lose internet access, or have your Mac die from a low battery. Also just make sure that your Mac is in a well-ventilated area, so like not on a blanket, to ensure it doesn't overheat as the download process is quite tiring on the computer and the USB. So at this point, your USB should look like mine, where you have your Sims 4 app and your packs all stored externally. But before I finish off this video, I want to share with you a few tips for other ways that you can utilize your USB and get the most out of external storage. So my first tip is to store extra sim related files. So for example, as you can see, I actually store my cast backgrounds and my loading screens on my USB. And if you didn't know already, you can't actually have more than one package in your mods folder. So you can only have one cast background and one loading screen. Now, in line with that, the second tip is essentially to just store your extra mods or CC on the USB. Let's say you're going to have a few ongoing saves, and in the save files, none of your sims are actually at the point in their lives where they have a horse. However, you have a bunch of horse mods in CC that you really don't want to get rid of or have to find again. Well, you can use this USB to store them until you need them in your game. The other thing you really want to make sure though, when you are storing your mods in CC, keep an eye on that number, because obviously the more files that you put on your USB, the harder the USB is going to have to work when it transfers that data to your computer. So lastly, my final tip is essentially just cleaning up your Sims folder. Particularly, I'm referring to the cache files. So the ones that you can safely remove are the avatar cache, cache TR or STR, the local thumb cache, online thumb cache, etc. If you also use Deadpool's MCC command center, you can delete any of the last exception files that is generated. Of course, make sure that you read it to figure out what the problem was that caused it before deleting it. So that brings us to the end of this video. However, I do just want to mention that I am working on my next video, how I organize my mods and custom content folder. I was going to try to squeeze it into this video, but I feel like it would just be too much. So I'll just do another one. To ensure you don't miss that video, definitely just hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And with that, thank you so much for watching. And I hope this video was at least a slight bit helpful. Um, if you have any questions, definitely just leave them down below and I will try my best to answer. But that's all for now. Bye.